On this episode of Living the Dream, Captain Jimmy and Louisa head to the plantation on Crystal River to fish with their longtime friend, Steve Rodriguez. And together, they crank in the night's feast. There you go, Steve. Now that's a big old Crystal River gag right there, Steve. Holy smoke. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's huge. Oh, he's swimming out like a cobia or something. What is it? It is a cobia, no kidding. <laughs> what a monster. Oh, we've been waiting for this one for a while. Get in here. Woo! Woo! <laughs> there he goes. That's a king. Can't see him yet, but this is no joke right here. <laughs> you got him. I told you about that pinfish you right did, there. You did, you're right. Holy smokes. He smacked it. For Jimmy and Louisa, it's an early rise at the plantation on Crystal River, their home away from home. The humidity is high, the cicadas are thrumming, and the weather is crystal clear on the Gulf. Joining them is longtime fishing buddy and friend Steve Rodriguez, and he's been fishing these waters with Jimmy for years now. They ready the boat, make their way down the winding tributaries towards the Gulf, and about as soon as the anchor is dropped and the Palomar jigs are in the water, the fish are on. Got him. There we go. Well, guys, welcome back to another episode of Living the Dream. Today, we're out of the plantation on Crystal River fishing for grouper. And I got a decent red grouper right here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. These guys only have to be 20 inches to keep. He's going to be close. I don't know if he's going to make it. Fish on. There Woo! you go, Louisa. First drop, back to back. What you got? What you got? You measure this one. Oh, and I have a gag, and you have a red. Oh, wait a second. It might be a it's red. It's a red. It's another red. We're on some reds here. Reel it up. It's like twins. <laughs> Get them over here and measure them. Nice. Gonna make it though. No, it's like 19. Oh, All right, I'm gonna go ahead and release this one. There you go. With both group are too small for the keeping, Jimmy and Louisa were happy to see a school of amberjack find their chum. But it was Steve who got the first bite. Nice. Woo! All right. Fish on. Oh, on nice. Fingers up. It's an amberjack. Yeah. Woo. All right, it's on that pink and blue Palomar, huh? Yeah, buddy. All right, those little babies uh, pull, don't they? Fun to get. Oh yeah. Settle down, buddy. It's nice. Woo. The amberjack are out of season, but they put up one heck of a fight, so they're fun to bring in, and Steve knows it. He wastes no time getting another Palomar jig back in the water, and within seconds, he's got another fish on. Nice. Steve's no stranger to the reel, but a Palomar jig goes a long way in these waters, and the Amber Jack are crushing it. All right. Good job, Steve. You guys see what Steve's tearing it up on here. Come here, Steve, real quick. Look at this, guys. Oh, yeah. 
Man. That's the, the pink and blue Palomar jig is the one that he chose out. Definitely we can't working. definitely work it. You can see that. You can't keep Amberjack this time of year. Even if we could, this guy's too small. But put up a heck of a fight, huh? Good job, Steve. Get this guy back in the water and go after some grouper. <laughs> he gave me a good smack before he left. Didn't like me feeling all over him. Look at them all down there. Holy smokes, I bet you'll catch another one right now. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by Salt Life, Live Salty, Grizzly Coolers, envisioned, engineered, and perfected for performance. Decket, never compromise, demand the best. And by American Fishing Wire. After an early rise at the plantation on Crystal River, Jimmy and Louisa and their longtime fishing buddy Steve headed out to the Gulf to fish for grouper and cobia. And with the help from the Palomar jigs, Steve is on fire with the amber jacks. Nice, Woo! all right, fish on. Good job. Yeah. Woo. All right, those little babies uh, pull, don't they? Fun to get. Oh yeah. Nice. All right. Yes, sir. Good job, Steve. Yeah, buddy. You guys see what Steve's tearing it up on here? Come here, Steve, real quick. Look at this, guys. After those back-to-back -back jacks, he can't help but throw a Palomar down again. And in just minutes, Steve hooks into another one. I guess they're still staying with the boat this far away from the wreck. There they are. See them? <laughs> Feel big? You get a big one next to the wreck and get you cut off. Nice. It's all you. Amberjack make for a great fight, but they crowd the water, making it hard to pluck in-season species from the wreck. <laughs> Good job. All right. So Jimmy bumps the boat up to a different wreck, hoping to reel in some grouper or cobia. But the amberjack are everywhere, and they are loving the Palomar jigs. So it's no surprise when Jimmy and Louisa hook a double on them. I thought I saw a cobia because it was brownish. That would be nice. Get plenty of them here. Oh, there, oh, they, there are. they are. <laughs> we saw them at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yep, they're following you. Oh, See. my God. Oh, I got it. Nice. Oh. Woo! These things are a blast. Mm -hmm. oh. There we go. Now we're talking. Mm. <laughs> Golly, guys. This is a little bigger. This is just for fun right here. Not in season. Oh. Just wanted to work our backs out a little bit. And these Palomar Woo! jigs will work your back out when you hook Amberjack on them. My gosh. These things are strong. It's a good one. A little better. I'm fighting them on this uh, 5.3 ounce Palomar flat side jig and their 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'll give you a look at them if I can calm them down. And that's the jig that I'm using. It's flinging everywhere. Let me stick them on the cooler here where you guys can see them better. Yeah. Mm. Hold on. Crazy wild fish. All right, so there's another look at the double on the amberjack. We've been getting these guys all over the place out here. A lot of grouper biting, too. And of course, these are not in season. And even if they were, they're not big enough to keep. And what we're catching them on are these 5.3 ounce Palomar flat side jigs and 80 pound Palomar fluorocarbon leader. These fish are very aggressive. I know, I love it. <laughs> it's fun, but we're going to have to move on because they're taking over the grouper fishing. Yeah, let's do it. Let's catch some grouper now. All right. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by C&H Lures. Be a winner with C&H Lures. Plantation on Crystal River, the place to stay and play along Florida's nature coast. 
and by Salt Life. Live salty. Before the break, Jimmy and Louisa landed a double on Amber Jacks. All right, about to release the double. Here he goes. There it goes. Nice. The Amberjack are getting in the way of the Cobia and Grouper. But before Jimmy can bump the boat up, the flat line gets nailed. Woo! <laughs> there he goes. That's a king. That one's running like a king. We're out here trying to catch some grouper. We just put the flat line out and uh, started peeling out. I think I got a good kingfish here. Woo-hoo-hoo! It's not too tight. Feels like a decent fish. We have one of the CNH lures rigged and ready stinger rigs on here. It's rigged up with the uh, AFW toothproof wire. Oh man, I think we're gonna have us a good one. Can't see him yet, but this is no joke right here. He's a good one. Come on, slow down. Slow down. Let's see, gosh, that's as tight as I can put it. With these little baby hooks, you can't get it too tight because a lot of times these fish will have the hook slip out of their mouth and end up in their skin. They get skin hooked in the back or the side. Just can't put too much pressure on them. And as you can see with the kingfish, they just haul butt when you hook them. It's got to really baby them. <clears throat> he's coming at me right now. That's why it's easy for me to pump him in. His head's at me. He's trying to get resistance and pull the side, but he's not facing away yet. As soon as he gets the head away from me, he'll be just like last time. 100 yards that way, he'll be gone. Oh yeah, there he is. He's down there. Big old silver fish. Ooh, coming near the surface, coming near the surface. Look at this here, guys. Mmm. Get away from the anchor rope. I'm trying to steer him back this direction. I just want to lead him the right way. It's a good one. Whoo, monster. Let's stick a big one. I'm nervous right now, it's this big fish, and he's laid up beside us. Let's see your path. Use as much of that gap as you can. Use the whole length of it. Good job, Louisa. Good stick. I got him. Well done. Well done. Woo. Let me show you guys what we got here. That is a full-grown king mackerel right there. Nice one. Woo. He's actually hooked better than I thought. You see right there in his mouth, that's where that CNH stinger rig got him. And that's why we're using that AFW hard wire because of that, uh, those teeth right there. They will slice you open, that's for sure. And they'll also cut any mono you'll ever have. Wow, good one. Look at the size of that, gosh. Good job on the gaff, Louisa. Thank you. Beautiful fish. Yeah, it is. It's a heck of a fish. There's that. Did you see that? I didn't even clip it. I grabbed it to move it, and the line, the, the wire actually just broke. That's what happens with the wire when it gets a kink in it. <clears throat> what a fish! Man! Love it out here out of the plantation on Crystal River. You never know what you're gonna run into. Now we did purposely have that stinger rig out specifically for kingfish, but you can be out here fishing for grouper and run into kingfish, cobia, dolphin, you know, all kinds of stuff. Anything could show up. But this smoker here is definitely going home and going in the smoke. We're gonna make some dip out of this guy. These are one of the best fish to use for dip just because of that oily meat. Whew, it's a pretty one too. All right, this one's a pit pig for the grizzly, so we're gonna go ahead and stick it in the floor cooler. Good thing these copias come with nice coolers in the floor as well. Good fish. After stashing the king, 
Jimmy relocates one last time, hoping to pluck another gag from a wreck. And it's Steve who ends up feeling the tug. Oh, yeah. Nice. There you go, Steve. Get it, Steve. There you go. Oh, it's a nice gag, Steve. Well done, dude. Look at that. Big old fatty. Wow. Stay. Stay. Good job. Woo. He waited to get wild till he got in the boat. Now that's a big old Crystal River gag right there, Steve. How we do it? Holy Woo! smokes! Nice. What a stud! <laughs> Good job, man. Fish is probably 28, 30 inches, 29. Nice fatty. Yep, buddy. <laughs> Good job. Let's get him in the grizzly and get another, bro. Before the break, Steve reeled in another thick Crystal River gag for dinner. Nice. You got it. Oh, yeah. There you go, Steve. Oh, it's a nice gag, Steve. Well done, dude. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Got some more, huh? Heck yeah. With some nice fish in the grizzly, Captain Jimmy ties on a new leader and rig for his bottom rod. And just after dropping it to depth, his bait gets crushed by something strong. Golly! <laughs> oh my gosh, he's huge. <laughs> what a monster! Oh, we've been waiting for this one for a while. Oh, he's swimming out like a cobia or something. What is it? It is a cobia, no kidding! Holy cow, look at that cobia! Wow, he's all scratched up like something bit him. Like he was in and out of the mouth of a jewfish. Come here, don't shake it, don't shake it. A little slack. Should I get a net or a Yeah. Get in here. Woo! Give me some slack. I did, I did. There he is. Mmm, mama. Woo! My gosh. Nice. Let's sit him down here. That's what we were after. All right, guys, there's the cobia after we cleaned them up a little bit. And one of the things I was telling you to look out for on a cobia when you're grabbing them are these spikes right here in the center of his back, kind of like his, just runs right down his spine. And they're super sharp, super hard. I mean, they'll cut you all the way into the bone. It's about the only thing you got to watch out for on one of those. And they are delicious to eat, one of my favorite fish to eat. And this one was in and out of a jewfish, actually, that had them for a little bit. If you look here, you can see where the mouth of the jewfish scraped down his side. And it actually had the head of the cobia in his mouth. That's the jewfish's teeth scraping him. And all the way down this side here, luckily we got the fish back. But that's one of the problems with all the Goliath group out here, man. They're eating everything, including the fish we want. Whew, what a great day. Kingfish, cobia, grouper, all the stuff we wanted. Wow. While Jimmy stashes that cobia in the grizzly, Louisa grabs a pinfish from the live well and drops it down, hoping for a big gag. Within seconds, she's got another keeper at the end of the line. You got him. I told you about that pinfish you right did, there. You did, you're right. Holy smokes. He smacked it. <laughs> Feels good, huh? Oh, yeah. I'm going to leave mine right here beside you. I don't even want to bring it in. I'm just going to help you grab your fish. I think it's a big gag. There you go. Keep them coming, keep them. Oh yeah, it's a nice gag. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. Oh, it's a big mangrove. No, no way. way. No, it's a red grouper. Oh. But that's still a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> we went through all every emotion things, right there. Yeah. Red grouper are a lot Which stronger than gags too. You no, know, that looks like a keeper. Size. It only yeah. has to be 20 inches, right? Let's give it a measure. Let's do it. Yeah, he's a keeper. That's legal. Longest point on a grouper and snapper with a pinched tail. That's a great keeper right yeah. there, about an eighth of an inch over. Mm. Tasty when they're that size. Oh, they, they're very strong too. Oh yeah, look at the colors on them. And check out the inside of the mouth on a red grouper. Watch how red this is. Look at that. Oh yeah, real pretty mouth. Cool design on them. 
All right, another dinner fish. Another keeper. Got him. Got him that time. That's a good one. That's a little better. It's not as big as the one I left in the rocks, but it's a good fish. We've got 80 pound Palomar fluorocarbon on here, so we have really good leader, but there's sharp rocks everywhere down there, and that's a good grouper. Yeah, man. Yeah, that one will fry up just fine. Wow. That's what we have down there. Just moved to the new spot. Everything turned off after that Jewfish tried eating our cobia. Moved over here, and the grouper are home. With help from Steve, Jimmy and Louisa got the kind of fishing every sportsman dreams of, and they routed off some of the most delicious species on their checklist. They've got a long haul in, and the grizzly cooler is packed. So they decide to call it a day and head into the plantation. Once they dock, they can hit the pool or stroll the beautiful hotel grounds, but it's their catch that's on their minds. Straight from the Gulf, they unload their cobia, grouper, and kingfish from the grizzly and hand it over to the plantation chef at West 82 Bar and Grill. Anyone that's ever held a reel knows the excitement of seeing the rod tip bend and hearing the line peel out. But the best part of the day for Jimmy, Louisa, and Steve is grabbing a table at the plantation and tasting their catch over shared stories. For more fishing and diving action, follow Captain Jimmy on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok at Captain Jimmy Nelson.